that. Anyways, welcome to the Relevant Information Society. Oh, shit, Andrew. Mm -hmm. Just stepping all over. Yes, welcome to the Irrelevant Information Society. I'm Ryan. With me, as always, is Richie. Tapping red, tapping blue. Richie. Apparently he's shown his is it flag. And we have the original gruel, Andrew. Hello. Or he racked us today. I mean, you're wearing red and black, so you're it's racked us. Oh, I'm also wearing white, too. I'm talking white, black, and red. I don't know what that is. I don't, I'm not that... Whatever. Uh, t- <laughs> today is Andrew's topic. Um, I believe I'm gonna single player versus multiplayer. Yeah, so I'm gonna adjust the mic slightly to be facing more you. We share a mic because <laughs> yeah. we were poor men. <laughs> also, it's my mic, so I still and must... I'm also buying the food. Still. My comment still stands. <laughs> I'm carrying this group. <laughs> uh, anyway, go ahead, Andrew. Inform yeah, us of what's going on, and hopefully we'll actually have a natural conversation this time. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, like I said, single player versus multiplayer. I'm going to start with multiplayer, since multiplayer has been around since, like, the 1958, like, 1950s. But that's when the first game was made. The tag? It was uh, <laughs> Tennis for Two. Oh, it was like that the Pong, what we understand is Pong today. Yeah, yeah. That was pretty much the base for Pong. Hmm. And the guy who made it was actually a physicist. physicist. Yeah, I could see that because I know uh, the original Tetris, I believe, was a Russian engineer itself. I forget what he was an engineer of. I'm pretty sure it had to do with rocketry. But it's like when it comes down to it, a lot of those base games is basically testing out program what they can do as programming and for them it's i guess more of a numbers game when it you break down to it yeah that's and that's what kind of got started off all the big games because later on it, then pong came out in like 72 and all that then these things that took off so if the original was made in the 50s, did, was it like a copyright thing that it came out as Pong, or did he like just sell the rights, or was it... I believe he sold the rights to it. I think it's all totally different made Pong. I mean, I guess with video games, the, it's it's a bit harder, but I mean, I'm pretty sure there's like three different versions of Space Invaders um, um, in the original. Yeah, like, I think there like, there was a co-op game called Space Wars, I believe. Yeah, but I found out the fucking Pac Namco, my girlfriend, she loves playing the, um, like, the Gal- Galvatrix or whatever, which is basically kind of like Space Invaders, only the things swoop down at you one at a time, yeah. and you don't have the cover, and then there's Centipede, which mm-hmm. is also a weird kind of Space Invaders adjacent thing. Yeah. So pretty much that's that's how where where it came from came from and all that yeah huh but like nowadays it's well, everywhere you see there's multiplayer games which I mean it, it has its ups and downs obviously it all started with co-op character co-op and that's where it kind of evolved into online multiplayer yeah. Uh, on Couch Co-op, I will... I am a firm believer, and I don't think that's a very uh, hot topic to take, or hot take to topic. <laughs> um, if you're playing GoldenEye, and you choose odd job, you're the bitch. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. That's a good example of uh, Couch Co-op, I think. Too. You are the fucker of that group. <laughs> you are the fucker? <laughs> Um, but yeah, then it gets kind of off to being on different councils. Mm. And I mean, like I said, there's good things about it. Well, like you can meet new friends online and you can hone your skills. And there's, you can also work as a team or fight against each other. I mean, it, it's always a good thing, though. But the bad thing about it is you always need internet to play online. Yeah. <laughs> and if you don't have internet, then you're... I suffer Kinda from sweet. that. Yeah. I do not have internet. I am the black sheep of society. <laughs> You're not the only one. That so, like that, even with no internet and games that say, you don't need internet to play, you need internet to do the updates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which completely render the games useless. Yeah, that's that, that part sucks. Uh, 
I mean, I know that I like doing single player more than multiplayer because it's always very difficult, especially um, if you're not usually into multiplayer a lot, sort of learning and getting into and finding a group of people who are willing to take that time with you to actually like, hey, we like your attitude, which is something that's incredibly hard to dictate on a multiplayer game anyway. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, no, team up with what us. Uh, we want to team up. I think there's only one time I've actually did it. It was like with Destiny where I just teamed up with two other random people and we did like three raids in a row. And um, weirdly enough, like it was still on my Xbox 360. Uh, I didn't have no what no PlayStation because I bought the first week Destiny bundle of course. Um, I didn't. I was missing my uh, the headset that came box. I, I left it in the box or I was missing it. So I was able to help them out and do all their shit without saying anything, any communication. Yeah. <laughs> I made it clear via shooting at random things that like I could hear them, but like. You couldn't uh, talk to them. Yeah, I, I couldn't talk to them. I was, like, helping out. And yeah, not stuff. having that headset definitely breaks a multiplayer game. Yeah. And, and having that line of and communication. And I was just lucky yeah, that like, these... Like you said, though, too, if you don't have, also have, don't have a group of friends, not a lot of people mm-hmm. like to talk to random. Or even strangers who are, like, just um, chill, I guess. <laughs> what would you say is the uh, multiplayer games that shape this generation? I mean, obviously, Call of Duty is probably one of them that shaped it. Mm-hmm. And there's probably a lot of Tom Clancy, like Rainbow Six Siege, and a lot of the Battle Royals now, too. Yeah. Like Rocket League and Rocket Fortnite. League. Fortnite and is one of the bigger ones. And but, Halo, um, Halo shaped a generation. Oh, yeah. That also shaped a generation. Because I was one of those people that was in that generation. <laughs> I like I want to say EA Sports games, but I also don't want to give them credit. <laughs> I mean, in a way, they, they helped shape a lot of the sports games are now. Yeah. Like we were talking before, the big competitions, also that also helped those competitions, either Twitch streamers or mm-hmm. professionals winning, like playing for a cash prize. Yeah. And uh, it makes sense that multiplayer would start video games, because if you think about it, the start of video games also happened at arcades. Mm-hmm. Arcade and, and, big and while a lot of those you can do by yourself, a lot of them are meant to eat as many coins as possible, and therefore, if your game doesn't have... If, if the idea of your game is pretty fucking basic, and it's not necessarily new then the only twist is to add more people to it to yeah. eat more coins as possible. Definitely. Uh, that, I mean, that's the thing. Arcades were the really big money hoard spots for yep. the older generation. Mm-hmm. And I kind of wish they still had arcades because I think a lot... I would have go to arcade. There is a... Um, we're during the great lockdown and virus and America being stupid thing of 2020 when we record this for context. Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> Uh, there is a bar downtown. The the it I forget what it is. The arcade bar or whatever mm-hmm. it's called specifically. Mm-hmm. All the arcade games are free, so you just get drinks and or I don't know what food equivalent it is. I I had a beer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was Opal's idea to go there like our second date or whatever, and we did all of the Simpsons arcade game. <laughs> because it's unlimited coins, so we just kept going through. Yeah, yeah. But yes, Andrew. Locally, there is an area where you all you have to do is pay for drinks, and you can play these arcade games. Yeah, it's yeah, that's um, that's the thing about multiplayer, though. Is you can see it gets dull, dull after a while too. Oh. Yeah, and uh, you keep playing the same area again and again, or same modes and all that. It gets Dull after a yeah. while. Unlike single player, where it has a whole campaign based around it. You have a whole campaign, and you can build your character however you want, mm-hmm. or if it's a pre-made character like The Witcher, you can play him like you want, like you were. You can character. kind of influence the character a little bit more yeah. than in multiplayer. I think that's the difference between maybe a 
pro multi uh, pro player and like a regular person is like I think they're all playing the same game over and over again and they're probably just looking at like the more technical aspects in terms of uh, like what they can do what is possible for them yeah. to do but, like what control configuration makes them more efficient and like testing the limits of the game that way is probably where they, after they fall in love with the game and how it plays they probably fall in love with trying to break the game to make themselves more efficient oh yeah find, yeah. find cheat spots to hide in or, or, or yeah it, the it best makes, combos it, to use it becomes less about the game itself and more about the technical I'm gonna aspects. break you yeah the technical aspects of the game and then, then the developers have to go back and fix that stuff <laughs> oh yeah yeah, every game kind of, you look for that way to break it, or the best way to play it, the most yeah. efficient way. Um, yeah, and I think, like, as going a single player, Skyrim, I think one of my favorite ways to play that, and I like that, but there's a couple ways that I like to play it, um, and it's from one of my friends told him that he, told me that he just does a merchant run. So no fighting skills, runs away from everything, including wolves, <laughs> like speech craft, and a lot of the crafting in terms of making armor. And that's it. He role plays as a traveling merchant. And he can do that because as long as you don't go to like the Greek Falls Barrow and mm. do that and get the actual tomb and whatever, dragons never show up. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> and so I do that, except for like, I don't do the thing, but then I do... I go to the places where the dragon words are. So I absorb all these dragon words. I just don't get the shouts because I haven't <laughs> killed a dragon yet because dragons <laughs> don't show up. I get these oblivion weapons and stuff. I do the assassin and thieves guild stuff. <laughs> so I was like, I'm getting all these awesome weapons at a higher level, but every time I go back to... Uh, and now they're for trade. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and, and I, every time I go back to like the main uh, like white run and like use the enchanter thing there, it's like, oh, I thought you were off the break through the barrel already. I'm like, dude, that was like four months ago. I've been having the time of my life. Like, Fuck you, man. <laughs> <laughs> there are no dragons unless I progress the plot. <laughs> yes. But now I will enjoy four more months of running around. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, that's another game. You can go to single player game because you can make different characters and you have different ideas of what you want to do. Yeah. Well, they're kind of trying to shape that into multiplayers now, too. Well, they, they are. Where they you have can individually a, design a characters, think, like Fallout. You can kind of come together now. I think with Fallout, it's 76 had. Okay, full disclosure, I've never played 76. I didn't have a good feeling about it when it came out, and uh, history is showing me that I'm right. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, they finally added NPCs after like a year. Yeah, yeah but even then, their uh, entire like upgrade system, their like system on how you go, is not based off of the regular stat charts and bats. It's like cards and whatever you have to unlock cards. Yeah. Um, and then because bats doesn't work in an MMO where everybody is running at real time, you can't like yeah they change you bats. can't you can't slow slash pause everybody on a server every time somebody's using bats. <laughs> so it's an understandable change, but yeah, well, that, if they, if they did that though too. It would legit mess up the game. Basically. Yeah, yeah, that's what. And but the thing is, that's understandable. But that bat system covered up. A lot of the like I'm I was playing some Fallout 4 before you guys came here, um, and there's sometimes where it's like I'm aiming and it's like oh yeah you're definitely in my reticle bam bam and like no damage registered because of whatever and that's making sure you hit that thing covered up a lot of those shortcomings that that they didn't get with the first person shooter when they s switched to that mode. Yeah, I mean, it, I played it before, and it's not as good as they say it is. If they were actually would have worked on it longer, then they released it, then it probably would have been a better game. Yeah. But I think a lot of problem with the single player gone multiplayer games, and um, is I mean, it would take 
a lot of effort, but I almost think that there needs to be a separate co-op mode itself. And I know a lot of early Larry games had single player okay. co-op, and co-op changed some things because I, I mean, we were playing um, the Far Cry uh, once, but every time we do a mission, it takes over, and you know, the cutscene addresses like the main person, but it doesn't address the fact that hey, there's now two. Sheriff deputies running around shooting yeah. up <laughs> shooting up hell turkeys from the great beyond. Um and if you're gonna try to sell multiplayer in a traditionally single player campaign setting, then you need to make those tweaks to make it uh actually encompassing and actually um something else or else it's just single player with a person who I can smack when I see them in real life because they're fucking things up for me right now. Yeah, that's another thing, though. Most of the single-player games have multiplayer in them. Unless it's just a legit solo single-player game. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I, like Outer Worlds is just a solo world. Yeah, Skyrim, a God of War, yeah. Spider-Man. And for a lot, and for some of those, I understand because a multiplayer doesn't make sense. But it's also there are single player games where the multiplayer is more adjacent; it doesn't intrude. Like usually older games, like GoldenEye and Star Fox sixty four. <laughs> I mean, Borderlands also has like a multiplayer where you're in the same world and you get legit share loot and all that stuff. Yeah. Too, which I kind of like that as well. But do but does the I haven't played Borderlands in a while. Um, do the cutscene characters when they address the person? Is it cut to a cutscene that both people have to skip, or does it only address whoever the main quote unquote main player is? Most I've seen, it's just the one screen main player gets that scene, yeah, and he can skip it or somebody can skip it. And then it goes yeah. back to like a multi platform kind of situation. I know in the beginning of the Borderlands 2, both of you are side side by side. Yeah. While clap clap is Yeah, they 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 do try to do some of the ambiguous stuff with the positioning of the people, but it's still one of those things where it's like uh like those deep the details. Um I know that there's some games that actually do it where if you have, like, it's like one of those adventure games where if you make a choice, the characters in dialogue will refer back to that choice. Mm-hmm. Well, if you're going to choose to be multiplayer, why not have the cutscene refer back to that? There's, oh, you guys, plural. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, refers back to that. I guess that, it takes more advanced technology in the game. It's just another line, honestly. It's, <laughs> it's, because of those, because they're cutscenes, it's more, um, about, I guess, the recording actors and slight animation in terms of lip sync. Like, not much necessarily has to be changed about that. No. Even, like, Halo also does that, where, where like, <coughs> it will show, like, your character on your screen and my character on my screen. It doesn't show the other person. Like, the, yeah, those older the older ones are actually kind of hilarious that allow you to do it, because it's like, you can tell who the main person they're following is because the second cutscene out, it's like the other person just bloops. <laughs> they're like not there in the cutscene. And then they're like, well, there can only be one know. Master Chief. Yeah. <laughs> Who's that other guy? Oh, just get him out of the screenshot. But Master Chief is a rank. <laughs> there could be tons of Master Chiefs. <laughs> it's a military rank. It's not a fucking name. <laughs> That's his name. <laughs> Isn't it like John and then a number? Yeah. Is his actual name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the uh, shout out to the Living Flame, who's probably shouting very angrily. He does like the Xbox and he does like the Halo series. So me just being like. Oh, it's a rank instead. Is might be contrary to the lore, and me not knowing his number might make him upset. But uh, <laughs> John One Two Three Chief, that's his name. <laughs> the only thing about single player is if 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 you like leave out of the game, 
you know, you're not getting punished for leaving the game like yeah. you do in multiplayer. Yeah. Or people won't report you for just the random stuff. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, that's really difficult. I mean, I guess I will say, especially with Far Cry and I guess Division, so Ubisoft, despite shit that they've done, well, they have done that have come to light recently. Um, that's really been a really good feature, the drop in, drop out. I know that they're really big proponents of it. Granted, the games that they have have been single player with an asterisk nest to it anyway, yeah. where it's like, it's vague and nebulous enough that it supports multiplayer. It doesn't have to be single player. It's more of a choice. And they're allowing other people to come in and drop out as they please without necessarily ruining the other person's game is actually been really phenomenal in terms of uh, bridging the gap. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah, mostly what I got, though. But. Yeah. So my only uh, question in mind is I was the things that I was going to research before I didn't um, <laughs> was uh, the idea of um, so many times we see, like, mainly it's EA, I think, feel. EA being like, single player is dead. And then, like, three months later, somebody else, or even somebody else on the EA team, Jedi Order releases a single player game and it makes like seemingly more money on the release than a multiplayer release does. Yeah. And it pairs to me that if the game industry in its totality is like, no, <laughs> a single player is dead, they would all clamp together and be like, yeah, no, single player. But then there are also companies who want your money. And therefore, are like, no, no, we agree. Single player's dead. Hey, get that single player game that we've been working on ready for the release. I'm just going to take that entire market share. Fuck these guys. <laughs> yeah, no, single player's totally dead, my dude. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's what Bethesda's leaning towards, too, is they're thinking uh, single player's dead, and that's why they're making so many multiplayer games. Yeah, and then when they started to head that way, I believe... What what came out with a semi six? Because that was also I think that was around the same time Spider Man came out though. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like every time the industry in general says single player's dead, there's they drop a single player game. There, there's a single player game dollars. dropped by somebody else, being like, obviously you're full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think the reason, so part of the research that I'd want to do is basically, um like release stats because there has to be some reason where this statement is coming from and I have a feeling it's not on um it's not on the release date it's probably on the longevity yeah uh because while on single player you can sell DLC and cosmetics it is yeah super obvious when you're going to sell power versus mm -hmm. in a multiplayer game more and more selling power is almost like accepted and yeah i feel like in multiplayer they want you to buy this stuff and this stuff is in your face all the time or mm -hmm. like single player going oh man there's this dlc that adds some more story yeah but I think that's something I'd want to either to look into later to come back to, but actually looking at the numbers of, like, single player versus multiplayer. Because in the arcade, it was definitely multiplayer yeah. uh, with few expressions, uh, missile command. And um, multiplayer is not long. Like, it's been more popular than single player for a while. Like yes. Yeah. Like, like middle to late like 70s. Yeah, I think most... So I'm just going to spitball the Andrew, you can correct me. But it seems that it was, single player really took more hold with the advent of the console of being at home. Because you can't have your friends at home all the time. Your mother says that's kidnapping. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, so I think that's where it took over. And then with online coming back, that's where the multiplayer sort of started to research. Flourishing. And um, 
Like, like Ricky said, if you don't have internet, you're pretty much screwed. You can't play any multiplayer games. Yeah. It also sucks that There's some, some singles players. Yeah, that also requires yeah, that. Yeah. That. Yeah. yeah, that's the sad thing you know about it. But I'm still wondering. Well, we're getting to a point in society where having internet is basic. Mainstream. Yes, yeah. yeah, like it's water, electricity. Like, what schools stuff. expect you to have internet for reports and stuff. Yeah. Games expect you to have internet. Your friends expect you to have internet. internet. I, I mean, mean, who invites somebody over to their house with no internet? Well, we could stare at the paint. <laughs> Look at that paint right there. Well, I mean, if you have a big enough movie selection. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, board like, games will too. Yeah. Or if you're good enough DM. Yeah. Are you a good enough DM, Richie? No. <laughs> well, that's why nobody's coming to your house, obviously. <laughs> but I do have a surplus of movies, so... Oh, okay. Are you talking about Dinner Master? Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> um, and these hips don't lie. That's what keeps them coming. No, that's what Richie is. He's a dance master. <laughs> he only has a one move, though. <laughs> it's just a single player. Yeah, the single player. <laughs> Or you can be like a paladin and have the oath of throwing it back. Jesus. <laughs> DDR as a dance move. Is that just like a more rapidly flailing version of river dance? This <laughs> 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 is like, just like, yeah, it is a dance move because it was, we're talking about arcades, but I went to like Dance Dance Revolution. I'm like, technically, that style of dance is all the same. <laughs> It's it's the same thing. Um, I think we'll take a break. Uh, we're near half an hour in. Uh, we'll eat and then afterwards, um, maybe just talk about uh video game things or uh things that we've done in video games. Um, or even our favorite things to do in video games. Yeah, like yeah. Like I was talking about Skyrim earlier and like playing it. Like you're, it feels yeah. like you're not supposed to play it, but the fact that that's even an option is sort of contrary to that. I actually was always playing that Thursday too. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah. Do you imagine a whole patty made out of mosquitoes? Why though? They they carry like a crap ton of diseases. In other countries, they like bred them. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> they still they still carry a lot of diseases. Like chalk cover scorpions. Mm-hmm. Ants, there's yep. you can eat mantises, grubs. grubs. I mean, in the wild, I mean, that's it's what you have. Yeah. <laughs> I guess if you're dying of hunger, or if there's just a lot of people to feed. Yeah, I mean, like, that Survivor Man. pretty high in nutrition. Yeah, I watched a lot of Survivor Man. And disgusting it's like, looking. If, if the bug's colorful, or have, uh, like, a, if they're really stinky, stay away from them. <laughs> they will kill, they will legit kill you. <laughs> right, so uh, back from eating and talking about the food that can kill you, which I may or may not have served my co-hosts. Uh, <laughs> let's go. I mean, it's it's always difficult getting back into a conversation or continuing a conversation afterwards. Uh, instead, I'm just gonna like to put Richie on the spot. Richie, what are we gonna talk about next month? Next month we're going to talk about coffee. I like to stay around that kind of drug kind of feel for my <laughs> topics. I'm kind of worried about you. And this is your second thing. <laughs> <that's a laughs> second attempt. Yeah, all my stuff is going to be about drugs. <laughs> and uh, speaking of drugs, the other thing is going to be CCG. So children's card games. So you're two and picking two topics for yes. next time? Okay. I'll be talking about coffee and how CCG started and things of that nature. Okay, so do I need to do research? <laughs> no, because we'll just, uh, basically, if it pans out, we'll just talk about the card games we follow and play, okay. what we like about them. And I mean, me and Andrew play What draws magic. players into them, keeps drawing them in. I mean, I used to play Yu-Gi-Oh! So, I mean, I had some knowledge of it. Yeah, yeah I, I played uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! for like over 20 years. <laughs> I will be shutting the hell magic. up yeah, about Yu-Gi-Oh! I will say, the only weird thing I have is like, I did try to start with Pokemon. Oh yeah, I think that was everybody's first. And then traveling... CCG, but... 
Let's Trav- not get into it yet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we don't want to spoil you. And, well, and then Dave. Tra- and then Trav- <laughs> Yeah, Billy. <laughs> Died right. a hole. Oh, jeez. Dave, Dave, still, um, I hope you're being safe. Wear your mask. Hope you're doing the dishes. You do, do your chores. Your family cares. Unless they don't. <laughs> <laughs> then you can do whatever the hell you want them to do. Uh, yeah. Um, but I was saying, like, for some reason, whenever I travel around, I ended up picking up different cards. So, like, I have, like, a foil Korean Zoom bat. I don't know where I got it. I just have one. There. Yeah. Somewhere. <laughs> like, and it's just, like, really weird alternate prints that I've just picked up. And I'm like, I don't know where the fuck I got this. Well, I certainly didn't pay for a booster pack. <laughs> CCG or TCG? Both. Oh, well, that's like a mini episode. Are we Eldritch Abominations? That has, a lot of, <laughs> that has a lot of philosophy behind it. I know it doesn't sound like it, but, but like it's somewhat related to the uh, Jet Li movie, The One, <laughs> and just regular Lovecraft stuff and, and, and theories about parallel dimensions and shit like that. Well, what if we are an H.P. Lovecraft thing? Well, the thing is, it's written like those beasts like, have indifference to humans, so, like, they obviously don't see themselves as cosmic horror entities, so we wouldn't know <laughs> if we were cosmic horror entities or not. And then, and then, oh yeah, you have your two years of LARPing to talk about, too. Yeah, we could save that. Yeah. So, as you can see, we do have quite a bit of uh, things left uh, to talk about. Again, I think also... Probably. We're going to run for 50 episodes. So gonna, you stay tuned. We're going to run for at least a year and see what the fuck happens. Um, <coughs> um, and also... For we can, decades and decades and decades. Until one of us dies of slow and painful death. Stop looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> I will purposely write in my will that none of you get my laptop <laughs> or my mic. So you have to use your own money to get it. And even then, when you do this thing without me, you're going to be like, oh, cool, did you buy lunch? And you'll go hungry. <laughs> but we'll just replace you then with another guy named Ryan. Who buys us lunch. <laughs> Who buys us lunch. And has his own microphone and computer. <laughs> and Ryan, one's... this one's for you. And knows how to uh, edit and all that stuff, too. So. <laughs> um, but, yeah, we could also probably come back to the... Yeah. Well, single player versus video game thing, but looking at the money too. wise, yeah. So I'll say if you have questions that have popped into your mind while at work or in high school that seem really dumb, like things that you should either already know or just like aren't really worth the time to look up anyway, go ahead and leave a comment. And we might look into it for you using the same amount of time and effort and research that you would have if you cared enough. <laughs> As I say, the dumb questions with a middle to high school level of research. Um, I think that's it. Uh, I have personally have a Patreon. Um, I have another channel where I do animation stuff and skits. Um, Richie has no uh, online presence. Andrew has a video game. I'm invisible. On- Andrew has a video game online presence. Um, if you support the Patreon, you are supporting me. Feed these people. I only charge a dollar. Um, That's all we're worth is one dollar. Man. I'm only yeah, getting 95 fine. cents a month from uh, our, our, current, I mean, our still... only patron. <laughs> For your small donation, these two men can eat shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, In the arms of an eight. angel. Uh, <laughs> the wings of a I think, unless anybody has something they want to say. Uh, yeah, I want to close out the show with uh, multiplayer games that kind of shape your gaming uh, presence. Like, is there any one that kind of you were like, this is the game I got to get the multiplayer for? Because mine, for instance, was Tekken. I would always play Tekken with my dad. and Give me the controller. Give me. It's my turn. 
until we finally got two controllers. Um, me and my dad were pretty good at taking turns, so like the first uh, game multiplayer that we did was Mortal Kombat. The first one, I learned the blood code and put it in the back. Um, <laughs> but the one that actually I really enjoyed and got into was Red Alert 2. I actually did the signing up for the Westwood online services when the Westwood was still by themselves in order to play online. They're dead now. EA killed them. <laughs> Andrew, how about you? <laughs> yeah, I think one game me and my brother always played was uh, Backyard Wrestling. Yeah. Yeah, I did like the wrestling one. My dad got annoyed because I would make, like, I'd make a cruiserweight um, character, I'd make, like, a heavy, like, tall cane boy, and then I'd make, like, a woman's champion one, <laughs> and he'd, like, Fucking chill with all these creative characters. I'm like, I must have all the titles. The doll learned the game ball a lot. And if you have a favorite single player, I'll support that guy. Yeah. Um, say for me, my favorite single players would be like Fallout, uh, the Final Fantasies, uh, Devil May Cry series. I really like that. I really enjoyed the God of War series. Civilization. Oh, my Civilization's multiplayer too, but I've only ever played like with one of my friends. Um, for a long time, I've only used it as single player. Um, putting more thought into this than research topics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it, well, the thing is, like, I've I'm trying to think of single of a single player game I've gone back to like time and time again. Um, Halo. I've gone back to Halo Reach multiple times because it's one of my favorite yeah, Halo's. Just for a single player. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and Skyrim, obviously, is another one I think all of us can go back to. Yeah, mm-hmm. Skyrim. Um, I guess Fallout 4, and then every time I go back to it, it's usually been like three months, so I just erased the thing. So I've never actually beaten Fallout 4. Just yeah. played the yeah. same missions well, over I, and I've over. Been, I've been the DLC missions, but I haven't <laughs> been the actual mission. <laughs> I had a game, there's a game called Digimon Cyber School that I always loved going back to. Uh, Persona 5. Final Fantasy Tactics. The PlayStation. I just can't get over that game. I mean, technically it's a multiplayer game, but, uh, the, uh, Eat Earth Defense Force. <laughs> because it's so fucking dumb. <laughs> so dumb is good. Yeah, yeah, I played some with Andrew, and, like, every time I played some with other people, there's, like, after Mission 5, people are like, this is too dumb. Enough of this. <laughs> so, Richie, there's a mission where, uh, you're going around shooting giant ants. First off, it starts off with giant ants attacking people. Uh, whatever. Um, actually, hold on. Let's put a pin in that right now. The main draw of the game is going at higher difficulties to unlock ridiculous weapons. Mm-hmm. Um, the two most ridiculous ones, especially in the 360, not in the PlayStation 4, which actually has like different armor classes and shit like that. Um, but the two most ridiculous weapons are um, a super powerful assault rifle. With, like, 0.1 accuracy. Mm-hmm. Richie, it has 0.1 accuracy. <laughs> it it hits as much as a rocket and a rocket launcher does. But the bullets might go behind you. <laughs> that, that's not, it literally what happens. Like, I'll get into a group of, like, the ants, and I'll just, like, whip it out and just, like fire forward, and creatures behind me are and to dying. my side are getting hit and dying. <laughs> that, the other one, this one was fairly ridiculous, is called the Air Tortoise. <laughs> the Air Tortoise is a rock on, lock-on rocket launcher. Once you shoot, it's like fire, forget. Target the nearest enemy. It has the explosive power of a nuclear weapon. And by the way, a grenade mini nuke <clears throat> is indeed one of the weapons you can kill yourself with that shit. <laughs> and it has a fairly high blast radius. You can outrun it. <laughs> you can shoot the rocket and it'll go... And you can run right past it. <laughs> and you could just kill the entire enemies before the rocket gets there, forcing it to go to another target. <laughs> you just have to make sure that if you're going to do that, it's not like a lot of enemies, and the air tortoise doesn't hit 
while you're mixed in with the bunchel, oh, or else man. you might die. <laughs> um, yeah, but so, like, the third or fourth mission, oh, there's also a line in there, um, progress faster than science? <laughs> That's a quote from the game. I'm like, all right, <laughs> settle down. Um, I'm in this game. <laughs> there's a, they, Basically, it's the first one, the flying UFO, like, attack things. Things that can hover in air, and they dive bomb, and mm-hmm. they have machine guns. But you hear the radio chatter, like, oh my god, the entire air force, the mm-hmm. airfield has been wiped out. And I'm like, oh man, I'm like that sounds terrible. Keep in mind that you can destroy them with your assault rifle. <laughs> from the ground. <laughs> so, unless... They launched the planes off the catapult with no pilots inside. <laughs> Just like threw them in the water. <laughs> the basic like Vulcan machine gun cannon in every fighter plane ever is armor piercing and heavier than an assault rifle. Mm-hmm. Just in terms of caliber. Yeah. If you can take out one of these slower moving things that just swarm the sky so they wouldn't even have to aim that difficult to take out a lot of them, it would be near fucking impossible to believe that they destroyed the entire Air Force because, once again, you're just a guy running on the ground (laughs) with an assault rifle shooting upwards at them. Nice. Destroying them. (laughs) These things destroyed the Air Force. Which is why I personally believe that, as I said before, the airplanes were just, like, launched into each other or just lobbed off the mm-hmm. <laughs> the aircraft carriers <laughs> without pilots inside being like, oh. We forgot to load our pilots in. <laughs> oh, they. They wiped us out. They wiped us out. Like, didn't you just launch it without, they wiped us <laughs> out. <laughs> um, and I think it was around that time or after the spiders and the progress faster than science line that Andrew was like no (laughs) like let's take a breather because it's pretty pretty fucking dumb also but a lot of the stuff tends to repeat Mm. I think I still thought we got like pretty far though I forget whether it's the 360 one or the PlayStation 4 one one. because the PlayStation 4 one you could be like an archer maiden with a jetpack. You can be a utility guy who calls in heavy vehicles, or you can walk around in a mech with like a giant buster sword and shit like that. That's or as I like to do, double me. chain gun. And when you reload the chain gun, your guy just looks like he's shrugging, like. <laughs> <laughs> but then you can just just walk around going <laughs> and just destroying Blow everything. everything down. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I guess EDF is my formative multiplayer game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, put that in the description or let's see uh, who do you think wins, multiplayer or single player? Uh, I'm always going to say single player just because I don't like... Uh, multiplayer too much? Well, a lot more and more I've been more anti-multiplayer lo- with like loot boxes and gambling mechanics like yeah. when my girlfriend's like oh yeah I want to get my uh, little brother or my, my cousin or whatever like NBA 2K I'm like why? <laughs> like I know he'll probably like it but like there's fucking gambling involved and I would not I would not willingly give that give me money I'll pay for it for you but I'm not I'm not about that. I think just recently I bought a couple video games um, for them. Like two or three video games. That were, oh, Titanfall 2 was one of them. Because it's a short but awesome single player. Mm-hmm. Um, and like two other games. I didn't spend like $30. I think there's still another good single player game I like. It's called uh, Oxen Free. I, I like Oregon Trail too. <laughs> <laughs> I think the one problem I have with a lot of, like, I didn't, I used to not be able to finish games. Like, it wasn't until, like, I was in college that I actually finished a game, and I think the first one I finished was actually Ratchet and Clank. 
So, like, it's like, I'll get to a certain point and or get stuck and then switch to another game. Yeah. Or, like... When I first started playing, it was uh, <clears throat> Crash Bandicoot and Spiral. Yeah. Just yeah. switching in between the two. So I'm like, I'm stuck and I'm seven. I can't figure out what's next. Yeah. So I'm just going to switch out the game because I got 30 games for Christmas. <laughs> And only two of them are good. <laughs> yeah, I think games back then were a bit cheaper than they were. They are like nowadays. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I also Boulder Skate Dock Alliance. That's a fun one. That's especially fun one to myth if you get with uh, somebody who's never played before, because you can re-upload some uh, from your previous one. So when I beat it with one of my friends in college, what we did is we opened up a brand new game safe. And saved it at the tavern where we were like level one, didn't do anything. Um, then we re upload when we're at the tower where you can't use recall potions to get back, but also all of the best gear is in this black obsidian mage tower. <laughs> like all of it. <laughs> so it's like really easy to get over encumbered. <laughs> so what you do, you save at the points that allow you on the tower, upload the level one tavern where you haven't done. Transfer your characters into that area, mm. sell all your equipment, <laughs> save again, upload the tower, transfer your now not encumbered, super fucking rich high level people <laughs> into where they were, and continue on your merry way. And that's one of the things I like doing is like, I think I did it when we played Andrew, where it's like, I uploaded a previous character, I'm like, alright, give me the gloves and the butter knife that the fucking main quest guy gave you. Here's the best dagger that they have right now. Here's the best armor that they have right now. I'm fucking rich rocking this like 30 to level 45 armor set and shit. I'm just gonna hang back. You go ahead and kill these things. If you run back my way, I'll destroy them. <laughs> Anyways, uh, like, subscribe. Yeah, I think we bored you guys quite enough. Yeah. Support me to support them. <laughs> uh, but yeah, also, like I said, if you have any questions that have popped into your head at work as you distract yourself to your inevitable doom, feel free to put them down and we might do the research that you don't care to. We might have Richie do the research. <laughs> <laughs> and we all know how that goes. You'll get two sentences. <laughs> But you'll get acknowledgement your father never gave you. Two sentences. <laughs> All right. Later, guys. See you. Bye.